where there is one soul in Melbourne who has not heard the news of Jesus Christ or who has heard and somehow rejected it, then church planting is necessary. came here four years ago, today actually. There were some lovely faithful people, but the congregation got very small, and I think didn't quite know where to travel next. So the last four years have been really, in some ways I'd say, uh, not church planting in the sense of ignoring what's been before, but building on what's been before and trying to say, well, what, how do we live the gospel life here now? How do we live the life of the Christian community in Brunswick now? When we renew places or begin new places, how we allow the biblical tradition and what the Bible says about what a church should be, be refreshed and renewed or begin new. What do we need in order to be faithful to what the Bible teaches us about what the church is like? It's really hard for established churches to grow well um, once you're established for a while, this, the growth slows down. When you do something new, um, people feel more free to join. They don't feel like the newcomer because everybody's new. Mary Creek will be six years old in December. We meet in neutral spaces, so we meet in a school and our office is here in the middle of Fitzroy. To be part of a church plant that's um, meeting in spaces which are non-threatening and accessible. It's easy, it's easier for them to join and I want to be part of that. Um, I love the church and you get to see people coming in and growing and coming to know Jesus for the first time, maybe in a way that you wouldn't be seeing in an established church. The inner city of Melbourne is exploding in numbers and yet the church isn't keeping up. So there's all these opportunities for um, new churches to start in the inner city of Melbourne. We often think about the outer suburbs as being the growth corridor of Melbourne, and that's true, but uh, demographics show the inner city is growing as fast as the outer city. Well, we're living in this unique time in history where the vast majority of people in Australia right now are not part of a worshipping community. And so there's an urgency, a gospel urgency right now. The planning of new churches has a way of uh, engaging people who are not yet part of a worshipping community. And that's really been our heartbeat, our desire, is to engage with people who are not yet part of a church. It's proven that uh, statistically church plants are more effective in reaching new people. Uh, and so we wanted to reach out to, to, to people who haven't heard of Jesus uh, and, and see a vital part of our ministry as reaching people who have no other uh, avenue. The most difficult aspect of church planning is also one of the most exciting things about church planning and that is that it's launching something from nothing. Church planning is really exhausting. You know, you, you start off without a lot of resources. You're constantly trying to find more resources and that's not just money, it's places to meet, it's people's time. People are very time poor. Uh, if you're a minister in a church plant, then that takes a toll. And so you're starting from scratch. We always start from nothing. We had a vision as a family, then we started to pray and the vision comes true. We started with three families, six people, and as you see today, it's like 300 people. I really wanted to start Arabic congregation in, in one of the areas. I chose some areas but God chose the best. So Hell Trinity is the perfect place because mostly Coburg here, maybe 20,000 Arabic families live around. Our church is growing. We have vision, we work as a team, and we sacrifice a lot. Planting a church is very, very important. And if you start a church, it should be built on the Word of God. It should be biblical a church, guided by the Holy Spirit. This is the most important. I came here five years ago, appointed as a vicar here. And the Sunday after my induction, we start the Mandarin congregations with six adults 
and two children. And after five years, we now uh, regularly have about 70 adults in Mandarin service and children from two to about 50 in five years. Church planting is one way that more easy to build up the new ministry to connect to the local community. I think that is not just Melbourne Diocese, all the Diocese need to embrace the church planting. I think it's realising that this is bigger than you, that it's not about you. It's about going uh, to God in prayer and listening to what He wants to do and realising that His vision needs to take root in your heart and in the heart of your community in order for that community to flourish and become what He wants it to be. Uh, it's looking to Him for the resourcing and seeing whom He's raising up to go with you into His work. We must be uneasy as a church until every soul has been reached in Melbourne. And if we have the gospel with us, we have the breaking of bread with us, we have fellowship and prayer, we have a gift to offer Melbourne, and even if Melbourne doesn't want it, we still have to offer it. That's why we need church planting. So I encourage the Anglican Diocese to, to invest and to work hard to put a lot of effort in planting churches. Mm -hmm.